So what I'm gonna talk about today is, it's inside because it is raining, I have finished my rain fly. Snake skins and all. Now, before we get too far into that, I just wanna give my respect and props to Scott at DIYGearSupply.com. Folks, if you're looking for some materials to make your own stuff, and I'm is is about all about the uh, DIY as I can. I love DIY. I love making it myself to my specifications, and I can add the features in that I want into a product that I might not necessarily see in some other product to improve it for my usability and comfort level and all that. But this guy at DIYGearSupply.com has anything and everything you could possibly want to make hammocks, stuff sacks, uh, rain flies, under quilts, whatever, Inseltech. Um, in fact, I got a under quilt that I made that passed my wife's test. She's extremely cold natured and this thing had her warm within just a few minutes where a fleece blanket failed. I'll talk about that later, but check out Scott at DIYGearSupply.com. So what I've got is I've just got my my ridge line. I got some snake skins made out of the same material. This is 70D coated ripstop. I'll show you a picture of what it looks like on his website right here. And voila. Now, I'm going to tighten this up a little bit so I can get the ridge line up a little bit higher if I can. And um, we'll come back. Now we're up a little higher. Now what I did was I used some uh, sling it, zing it, whatever you want to call it. Got from Redmond. And um, just made a little loop, wove it in on itself. And let's do it this way because the lighting's a little bit better. And I just made a prusik knot. And while I was making the rain fly, I sewed the loop into the prusik knot while the prusik knot was connected to the rope. All right, so as you can see, there's no seam along the ridge line. The seam is down here on both sides. So what I did was I took I took the width, measured out how much I needed times two, cut it in half and took one piece, one piece and split it down the middle and sewed it to the edge of the other piece. So what I did was I sewed the length of half on the bottom of one side and then the other. Now, two feet, I think, No, I think it's three feet. Okay. 43 inches in, I think I figured a third, is a tab on this side. And then on the other side, it's about a third. And there it is. So this would be a tie out to here. And then this will tie out on this side, giving me a little bit more room on the inside. Now, like I said, I ordered this 70D coated ripstop. I'm tired. I'm physically exhausted from trying to take regular ripstop and making it waterproof. I tried the silicone and mineral spirits, failed. I tried the spray on stuff. It seemed to work in the pressure, I mean in the uh, water hose test out back, but you saw what happened in the trip on Springer Mountain. Um, if you haven't seen that, here's a link for it and I'll put it in the description as well. It failed. 
a thunderstorm came in and we all got soaked. I had three tarps that I made for folks that seemed to work good here at the house, but they failed in the field, which is why it's so good to test from home. But in this case, the test from home passed and failed in the field. So that's why you got to make sure that you give the full blown test as test as hard as you can at home and then take it to the field. Now, I've got four tie outs on each side. I got one, two feet in, I got another one. And then I measured from the corner on the other side, two feet in for that one. And if you've not seen these, they're just mini whoopee slings, okay? I've got a loop. I've got a berry. And at the bottom is the open end for the other side. It allows me to take the loop that you see here, put it on the stake, and I can adjust it with the whoopee sling like that. And this will also allow me to be up under the tarp when I do it. So if it, at night or a storm comes in and it's raining, I can actually loop, the, uh, tighten this up from underneath the tarp and I won't get wet. And I got that on all eight, corner, uh, eight tie outs. The reason for this two foot tie out, I can actually have this tied out and I can bring this up for a summertime fly, or if I'm under here, I can bring it in and make some doors. I wish I was outside to show you this so I could deploy the doors and show you how it's gonna close up. But I have practiced with the cat cuts and with this configuration, I don't really need them. I, I get a pretty tight fly when I string it up. But that's my rain fly. Again, I just got some sling it, zing it, I forget what the name of it is. Made a whoopee, uh, a prussic knot, sewed my loop into it. So I can stretch it out nice and tight. What do you think? It's a little bit heavier than normal, but for the storms I've been in, I think it'll protect me just nicely. And it will be worth a little bit extra weight. This whole contraption I weighed one pound, 12 ounces. Appreciate you watching. Thanks for your support, and uh, we'll see you on the trip.